Today's video may seem like a simple one, but seems to be a needed one. We'll be talking about identifying common cap and ball revolvers. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. last few years, there has been an enormous surge in interest in these cap and ball revolvers and black powder shooting in general, and that may be due to the fact that ammunition was scarce for a while uh, for modern firearms, and uh, even now it's astronomically expensive, and so a lot of people are turning to these. And with that comes a lot of new shooters for black powder, and with that comes a lot of questions. And I've been receiving a lot of questions myself and seeing more questions online, uh, forums, Facebook groups, etc. And one of the common things that I see is revolvers misidentified. And I wouldn't judge anybody for that. It's not a big deal if you misidentify one. But I just thought I'd make this video to just simply go through some of the common ones that are available and just talk about some differences to help, hopefully, you new shooters especially, be able to identify them. Let's just start over here on the far left. That is a reproduction of the Colt Walker. The reproduction is made by Uberti, and it usually stands out <laughs> when you see it at a gun store. It's a very, very large gun. Weighs almost five pounds, even when it's empty. Has a massive cylinder. Now, normally the cylinder would be blued like the rest of the gun. I just stripped the bluing off because historically the cylinders were not blued and I wanted it to be historically accurate. Notice also it has a very long grip compared to some of the others you're going to see in this video. And interestingly enough, its wedge pushes in from the right, moving to the left. That's the only Colt model that does that. The rest go from the left to the right. Moving forward, notice how the barrel starts out as what looks like would be an octagonal barrel up until this point, and then the rest is round. Overall barrel length is nine inches. And another unique thing about the uh, walker, another dead giveaway that you're looking at one, is the loading lever. Notice that up here it comes to a point and there is no latch up there connecting it to the barrel. Instead it has this spring down here, you can see that, that holds the loading lever up in place. So again, very, very large gun and I just showed you some features that will help you identify one online or in gun stores. Next is Colt's third model Dragoon. And this is another reproduction by Uberti. And it also has a very, very large cylinder, but you'll notice not quite as long as the Walker. A little bit hard to see on camera, but the Walker's is just a little bit longer. It also has just a little bit smaller grip, so that makes it noticeable. Same type of barrel as the Walker in terms of the shape changing from octagonal to round, but a shorter barrel. The Walker was nine inches. The Dragoon is seven and a half. The loading lever, if you look up here, you'll see has a latch now. It doesn't come to a point, and you pull down the spring latch in order to release it. And then instead of having a spring here, it clips into place up there. So that one is the Dragoon, and Walker and Dragoon are both 44 caliber. Next up is possibly the most popular, and this particular one is my favorite cap and ball revolver the 1851 Navy, which is another Colt model, and this is another reproduction by Uberti. And this particular one is what we call the London model. Normally, it would have a brass trigger guard and grip frame here, just like the Dragoon and the Walker, but this one is all blued steel, and normally that was on the London ones, although some of them in the United States, I believe, were made that way too. Notice this one has an octagonal barrel for the full length, and it is seven and a half inches. Same length as the later Colt Single Action Army, or the Peacemaker, as we sometimes call it. This one is a 36 caliber, very, very small cylinder, being a 36 caliber. Loading lever, similar to the Dragoon, in that it has a spring catch, instead of, or, but instead of, rather, having the little release up on the end, you have one on each side, you just grip those together and pull down, and that will release it. Wedge, just like on the Dragoon, goes from left to right. Again, that's all the Colts except for the Walker. So that is the 1851 Navy. Wonderful gun. Next up is the 1860 Army, another Colt model. Now this one is a reproduction made by Pieta, the other Italian company. 
Notice how this one, and the Walker actually had this too, blued steel on the back strap, but brass on the grip frame and trigger guard. Same on the Walker. This one is a 44 caliber, but much smaller cylinder than those real big irons down there. Notice this one is not completely straight. It has a little line right there. Starts out the same size as the 36, and then it steps up into 44. On the smaller Colts, and by smaller I mean not Dragoons and not Walkers, but these ones like holster and belt pistols as they're sometimes called, that's a dead giveaway you're looking at a 44. That cylinder shape where it steps up, you're looking at a 44. Unless you're looking at a very, very small pocket model, then sometimes they step up to 36 instead of 31. The barrel on this one I think is a beautiful shape, although you'll have to excuse mine. I kind of need a little touch up on the bluing here where I did some alterations on it. And this is an 8 inch barrel this time, and this one is fully round. There's no octagonal shape on there. And up here you have the same spring system as the 1851 Navy, but notice this. Instead of just hinging on a screw, like the 1851 Navy, the Walker, and the Dragoon, you've got this sort of rack and pinion system here that rolls it, and it makes for very, very smooth operation. So again, 44 caliber, 1860 Army, and notice also the long grip again, as compared to the very small grip of the 1851 Navy. Personally, I like the 1851 Navy grip, but some people, especially with large hands, really like that 1860 Army. Next up is one that is very commonly mistaken for the 1860 Army. It's probably one of the most common mistakes I see in misidentifying cap and ball revolvers. And when I was new, I used to misidentify this one as well. This is another one we call the London model. It's got the blued steel instead of brass. Normally an 1861 Navy, which this is, would have brass for the back strap and this metal here. But again, this is blued steel. I just like the blued steel. 36 caliber, notice no step up in the cylinder. So that's a giveaway. If you're not sure you're looking at an 1860 Army or an 1861 Navy, notice very similar shaped barrels but no step in the cylinder because 36 caliber. And while this barrel does have very similar contours and curves to the 1860 Army, this one is a seven and a half inch barrel instead of the eight inch barrel that the 1860 Army has. It does have that same type of uh, hinging system as the 1860 Army, which makes for nice smooth operation, and the same spring loaded catch up there at the end. And grip size, back down to the 1851 Navy size. So that again, 1861 Navy Colt model, and this is another Uberti reproduction. Last up, and certainly not the last cap and ball revolver, these are just some very common ones, but I do realize, of course, there are others, but I just want to show you some of the common ones that you can easily find in stores, usually. This one is the Remington. And when you see it at the store, you'll notice it's almost always labeled the 1858 Remington or Remington 1858. Historically, it was actually called the Remington New Model Army, and it is a 44 caliber, although there was also a New Model Navy in 36. It's 44, but notice it is just a straight cylinder, no step ups. Some giveaways that it's not a Colt. First of all, two piece grips. Notice you have a screw right here that holds the two panels on instead of solid one-piece grips that the Colts have. Probably the biggest giveaway is the enclosed frame. Notice this has the top strap. It goes all the way around, unlike the open tops on all of the Colts. A lot of people believe that makes the Remington stronger. It might, but Colts are pretty strong too. Now this one has an eight inch barrel and it is an octagonal barrel. And another big giveaway of the Remington is the loading lever. It has spring system, just like on a lot of those Colt models, but notice the shape down here. I've always found that an interesting shape. It's sort of almost like webbed, this thin piece of metal that protrudes downward, much different from a Colt. Again, 44 caliber. This is a reproduction by Pieta, but that is the Remington New Model Army. Now again, this video, simple though it may be, especially for some of you, some of you might be veteran black powder shooters, and this might have seemed silly, but there are so many new shooters out there. I just wanted to take this little chance to help you identify, like I said before, some of the very common cap and ball revolvers. 
Well, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video today, maybe even found the information helpful. Please don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. And if you look in the description, you'll see where to find me on social media, as well as where to find great Guns of the West products, including the new Cap and Ball Revolvers online course. Thank you so much for watching.